Today in this video, I'm coming at you with a desperate need of a haircut. Looking kind of scruffy today. Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. Edwin Anthony here from Resolutions Design. Today we're going to discover the frustration, the frustration of these products not coming out of the collections when you want them to come out. The problem that I'm trying to solve, I'm sure many of you had it, uh, is basically I've created a new collection, I've added products in the collection, I go to the front end of my store, and I don't see the product in the store. I'm about to pull my hair out. We're going to solve that today, okay, with these tutorials, all right? So buckle up. Let's get started. Let's not waste any time. Uh, I want to first go over, before we begin, all the fundamentals before I just start talking all this slang that I don't want to lose you. That's the whole point. That's why I'm saying this, okay? So let's start off with the basics, kind of like a recap on many of my tutorials that I've done in the past. Uh, right now, what you're seeing is the admin of Shopify for one of the clients that we have here, Love You Candle Co. Uh, if you're familiar with this screen, it looks something like this uh, when you're in the back end. And of course, if you don't know how to reach the back end, just go to yourwebsite.com forward slash admin, and then Shopify will go ahead and ask you for your username and password and all that good stuff until you reach this screen. Once you reach this screen, let's go over some of the basics, right? Products, okay? We have products, the database, the back end. This is all like, pretend you're uh, working for a retail store and uh, you have what people see in the front of the store, right? And then you have the stock room in the back. So this is kind of like the stock room virtually, okay? Uh, this is the back end. We have all products. It's just every product that's out here. Then we have a separate database called collections. And in this collections, that's when you have all those categories where the products are inside, okay? So that's the second thing you need to keep in mind. We have the products database, and then we have the collections database, right? And the third thing that many of you probably have forgotten is the main menu system, okay? And so you go to where it says online store navigation, and inside of navigation, we have our main menu systems, okay? All right, so, if you have added a product and you go towards a specific collection that you know you've added that product in there, but you're like, where is it? I don't see the product in my collection. Where is it, right? Let's make sure that you guys are doing a few things. First of all, let's review the collections. There are two different types of collections, right? If you use them or not, I'm just letting you know just in case, okay? There's the manual collection. Manual collection, what it means, and it looks like this, right? When you go inside of the collection, you see the collection name, you'll notice that on the product conditions, it's mm -hmm. blank, right? When it's blank, that means that this specific collection, let's dive in, that specific collection, in order for products to go in here, you need to manually place them there, right? Um, the sorting is something else. I'll talk about that in a second. But right now in this manual collection called our newest arrivals, we have approximately five candle products, right? And so if I wanted to add more, I go right here where it says browse. And this is my entire inventory of products as per the page of all products. And then you go here and you check the one that you want to add. And once you do that, press done and it'll show up somewhere towards the end here. Okay. Uh, depending on your collection, this might look a lot long, uh, longer. Uh, you might see a link that says show more, expand that so that you could see the products, right? So if you guys have a large library and you're not seeing your products, sometimes when you add that product manually, it's all the way at the bottom. They're never going to put it at the top because when you go inside the collection, you're like, Hey, I'm here. Where is it? And next thing you know, it's like on page five or something like that. Cause it's all the way in the back. Okay, so troubleshoot on that first. Make sure that if your collection is long and it's a manual collection, all the way towards the bottom. And all you have to do is just hover over it right here where it says where the freckles show. Click, hold, drag, do one of these, drag and drop so that it's all the way at the top. Alternatively, you could sort the, the um, this right here where it says sorting, collection sorting. Sorting is what comes out first, second, or third, right? If you're going to do it alphabetically, right now it's set to manual so that I could move everything myself, right? But if you don't want to deal with the manual movement, just put newest. And whichever 
new product that you add in this collection will always show at the top first because it's going to go from the newest and then all the way towards the end it's going to be the oldest product does that make sense so troubleshoot on that first again this is if you're in a manual collection okay and you don't see the product uh, the other troubleshoot is perhaps you've created the collection but you forgot to add the product in here that might happen but just in case all right let's go back to the other types of collections uh, those that have these conditions these are called conditional collections or uh, automatic collections i like to call them automatic collections the way that it works is that the product will automatically go inside this collection as long as you add the tag that corresponds to this okay so if you're like, okay, what tag does my products need to have? Or do my products need to have? They need to have whatever it says right here. Okay, in this case, the Bella Moore collection, we could see that the condition is that the product tag is equal to Bella Moore, right? So if I want a product to show up in this collection, we have to make sure that the tag, just like the way that it's spelled right here, let's dive into this. I'm gonna triple click on this, right click, copy. I'm gonna copy. Copy that, excuse me, and then go inside of the product. Let's do that. Let's go inside of the product. Right over, let's see here. Hmm. Positive inventory. We're going to talk about that in a second as well. Let's go in here into a product that has positive inventory. And right here where it says tags, right there, press paste. Okay. And then click on it. All right. And pay attention to right here where it says collections. Okay those that are colored like like this teal baby bluish whatever that means that it's part of a automatic collection but if it's a gray that means it's part of a manual collection so that you understand the color coding of that representation you follow so far so once i've added this tag right here don't forget to press save we're going to press save we're going to pay attention to this section right here the collections the product was saved. And as you could see, the Bella Moore tag is there. But why isn't that collection showing up? Because Shopify, when you save something, uh, you might want to call it propagate, whatever it is that they call it in their servers. It takes just a little bit of time in order for it to acknowledge that a change has been made and apply it to that collection. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press refresh on my browser. And as you could see there, by pressing refresh, now it's showing that it's part of the Bella Moore collection. Um, let's see if that collection, if we could even see that collection so that we could test it out. Let's go to the collection here, back into Bella Moore. And I'm gonna click on the upper right-hand corner where it says view. And in this collection, I should see that new product that I added there just very recently, okay? That's how it'll show up there. So that's how we make sure that the product is added based on an automatic collection. Let me undo this for the client before she starts flipping out, saying, hey, why is this product in there? Blazy, blazy, blay. Uh, let's go ahead and undo that. We're going to go back to this uh, here. And I believe, ah, I'll do it later. Anyways, all right, so let's talk about the last situation where the collection was any, wouldn't even show up on the website. You're like, hey, you know, I am here and in my navigation, I created the collection. I can't even see my collection. Like, where is it? Like, I saw it when I pressed view, but when I go to the front end of the store acting as a customer, I can't see it in my main menu. I don't know where it's at, right? The last part is the main menu navigation. So let's go, let's step back for a second here and let's go to the admin. And on the admin, we're gonna click on where it says online store. Once you go to online store, make sure you click on navigation and then you have your main menu system. Depending on how you have this set up or if you hired a developer to set all this up for you, make sure that you really understand how this page functions. Understand what each main menu means. If you do not, then I am sorry. This video is not gonna help you because I'm just gonna speak in general terms. Your main menu system could be set up so differently. It could be such a long list, depending on what developer you hired to put all this stuff together, that whatever it is that I'm gonna show you might be inaccurate because I am looking at this at the most 
plain and basic level, meaning that no developer has touched this. This is out of the box from Shopify type of thing. And I've created some simple navigations for the website to work. To be more specific, in order for us to trace exactly which menu we should start tinkering around so that this collection could show up, let's look at the website's front end first. And on the website, I'm going to click on the logo just to make sure that I'm on the right page, right? I'm going to hover over shop candles. And as you can see, these are the superior menus, okay? Shop candles, custom order, and candle makers. Those are the superior menus. But then there's sub menus and then the sub menus are those collections it could be anything really but in this particular case it's sub collections such as the classic spring fall collection so on and so forth right let's focus on finding the superior menus first to trace that menu system we have shop candles custom order and candle makers right i'm going to go right here and as per this screen shop candles custom order candle makers I'm going to look to see if there's anyone else who has that similar name. That's the part where it gets tricky. If you had a developer that has made more than one main menu system, he, called, he or she called it whatever, right? And the menu items are the same, that's where it gets a bit hairy because you need to contact your developer, your developer sloppy, I don't know, right? But you have to make sure that this is as clean as possible. Okay, so try to clean this out. Make sure that all the menus that exist here coincide with what's live on the website. And if it's not being used, you got to get rid of that or talk to your developer and see what you could do. Anyways, we know that this is the menu here, main menu. I'm going to click inside of this. And as you notice in this main menu, we have the superior menus with that indicator of a drop down. I'm going to go ahead and expand this and I could see now where these labels of that sub menu coexist we want to make sure that we add the new collection called bella Moore that didn't show up on the website that we were working on recently you remember that okay let's click right here where it says add menu all right and i'm not going to type the name i'm going to go to the link and on the link i'm going to type that collection that we were working with called bella Moore. I'm just going to type Bella and it notices that based on the search on the autocomplete here on Shopify, it's showing that there's two collections that might have that name. I click on it and here it is. This is the one that I'm looking for. I'm going to click on this and it has copy pasted the name of the collection to where it says name. I like to do that because many times where I'm just building collections, having to select the collection and then having to manually type it, then here comes the typo and all it becomes frustrating so i'd rather just do it once where i search for the collection on the link and then it automatically copy pastes the name into the label which is this one right here where it says name i'm going to press add and i'm going to press save whatever you do on the back end will not instantly show up on the front end edwin what is back end and front end this is the back end where you see the the, the URL that's probably not what customers type with the dot with the slash admin and all that stuff that's called the back end. This is called the front end. It's what your customers see. So get familiar with that term, write it down, especially if you're going to talk to developers. Okay. The back end, the front end. All right. Give me a like if you like that little education. So on the front end, whatever it is that you do on the back end, when you come back here on the front end, you have to refresh the browser so that the front end could speak to the back end, get all the updated information and show you exactly what you want to look for. Now that we've refreshed, if I hover over this, here is Bella Moore and here are the collections that we have already spoken about. If you enjoyed this type of video, I want to say my sincerest apologies that I've been slacking. Just like my haircut, I've been slacking, right? Um, I have something that I've been working very hard for you guys that I know you guys will love a lot. And I want to release it somewhere towards mid-May, probably early May of 2023. So my apologies for not making videos. More videos will come soon. It's just that I've been trying to get this project over and done with so that I could start pumping out all those tutorials that you guys have been asking for. But in return, please, all I ask is for your support. 
And by supporting me, all I ask for you is just to demolish that like button, like hit it hard, like boom, like just there you go, just that like button. And let me know down in the comments as well how much you appreciate uh, these types of training and the way that I express these trainings for you. And of course, I'm always welcome to hear any new types of training that you guys want. I am w responding to as many comments as I can because you guys are important. If you see that your comment is not responded and it's almost seven days later, bear with me. I'm just working on all these other projects for these clients while trying to help you out as well. Other than that, thank you so much again and see you soon.